Hey, welcome. I thought I'd do a video real quick about how to take pictures of when the family's over, and this is a good time to do that. I got a question from Michelle Bullock saying, any thoughts about doing a holiday photo shoot for us who are not in beautiful Hawaii and stuck indoors with tree lights and fireplaces and all kinds of indoor shooting challenges and the family's over? Good question, and what I'm gonna show you today can be used anywhere, from not just your house or home, but a hotel, a restaurant, a church, a wedding, a convention, a shopping mall, and even a parking garage, from one to 10, people in the picture. This is a good thing to always keep in mind when taking pictures. It's what I do when I'm just walking around town. Here's what you do. And this can be done with any camera. It's pretty basic and this is a good rule to always keep in mind. What you want to have, I call it the wall of light behind you. Always try to find a huge light source behind you. I call it the wall of light. The bigger the better. If it's the size of a wall, that's the best. A good example of this is a picture window where it's just this giant wall of glass it's like eight or ten feet across even if you're living in a cheap little apartment sometimes there's big windows that are like eight feet across that's all you need now that goes behind the photographer not behind the person because if it's behind the person who's having their picture taken then that's called backlighting which usually doesn't look great for the the picture you don't want that and then if you do want it you're going to have to have some kind of lighting on the person's face which usually means a flash or something like that we'll get to that in a minute so the general rule is always look for a wall of light behind you the photographer and you want to be backed up right against it here's some more examples you've got like uh, sliding glass doors or big Big windows anywhere when you're in a shopping mall and there's a storefront has a big picture window that's a good light source because it's really big here's another example or this or this or even at a gym you have a big glass window or something even if you're taking a picture of yourself the person or people who are having their picture taken should always be facing a big giant source of light not behind them in front of them facing their face that's a good start now if it's nighttime you can still have the same effect by putting a bunch of light on a big white wall and then having the people face that wall another good way to think of the wall of light is to picture the subject being inside of a box a room with one wall missing standing in the middle of a garage is a good example of that if a person stands in a garage facing the open door that's usually good lighting if the photographer is standing outside looking in now the background's not that great but that's a good example something where the subject is in shade but is facing a giant light source for example you could be underneath of an awning or a balcony where you're actually in shade but you're facing open sky or something really big and bright open sky is a great thing to face when you're in shade for good lighting but let's say you're indoors you got the family over it's nighttime obviously there's no sunlight so you probably don't have a big wall of light well the easiest most obvious thing to do is to take a flash picture that's what the first thing that most people do when they want to take a picture is they just put a flash on top of a camera and they take a picture but that doesn't usually look good because when the light source is coming right at you in the middle in the, of the face like that you have these shiny spots and it has that deer in the headlight look and it's just not very flattering so what I'm going to show you now is how to use a, a basic flash but get better lighting from it so it doesn't matter if you're using a big camera like this or a little tiny one like this it the effect is the same so I'm gonna start with this. This is the first most basic thing that any photographer does. Even professional photographers do this when they're in a pinch and they're hurry and they have like one to 10 people in the room and they have to take a picture. You take the flash and you aim it up at the ceiling like this. So you don't aim it down right at the person. You aim it up at the ceiling. So it bounces off the ceiling and back down at their face. Another good thing to always keep in mind is have the light source that's lighting up people's faces be a little above their eye level never below the eye level because that's going to create monster lighting but if the lights coming from above a little bit down that's always the best most natural flattering lighting because we're used to that because that's what sunlight does it's always above us so that's what we're used to seeing we're not used to seeing light coming from below so when you have flash if you if, they, if you had, can't do anything else just bounce it off the ceiling of course the higher the ceiling is the more powerful you have to set the flash what that does is it lights up the whole ceiling and then that whole ceiling becomes a giant light source that then bounces back down on people's faces you can light up like 10 people this way or just one person doesn't matter but the idea is to bounce it off the ceiling now some of these cameras like this one doesn't come with a, a hot shoe it has a built-in flash this little flash here it actually tilts 
So even though you've got a little tiny compact camera, the flash tilts, and a lot of the modern ones do this. All you have to do is tilt the flash up so it aims at the ceiling and you get the same effect. Now this isn't gonna be a very bright flash, so hopefully you have a low ceiling, like an eight foot ceiling, but you can get the similar effect with this. So even these little compact cameras can give you that effect. Another flash trick that I have, which is kind of cool, is if, okay, let's say you, you, can't, you can't tilt this, or you don't want to, or whatever, or you just don't have the opportunity to, or the ceiling is green, or it's just too high, or whatever. Okay, what you do is, you, if you just use this, this light just straight like this, it's too harsh. It, it's just not flattering lighting. So what I suggest to do is to get a piece of paper and you do this to it. You get a piece of paper and you tape it so you have a diffuser like this on the front of the flash or a paper towel. Get a paper towel. I did this when I was at a bar. I took a napkin, a white napkin off the, the bar and I just did it like this. So you have a softer, bigger light source that you can put over your camera. Anything that diffuses the light will help rather than just having a harsh light coming right at you. All right, so you can take pictures also indoors without a flash that gives you a nice big soft lighting. One of the things to do is to use lampshades and that is to have, now here's what I suggest you do. Take the lampshade off and try to have two lampshades, one on each side of you. You want to have a big surface of light, not coming from one side, but from both sides. And the reason you want to have lamps without the shade on them is you get more light. Half the light is bouncing off the walls. It's lighting up the whole wall behind you on both sides, and it's got light going directly at the people. So you have light coming from all directions, which is really good for giving you nice, soft lighting. Let's say you have nothing. Let's say all you have is a cell phone and everybody there just has cell phones. That's all you have to take pictures with. No problem. I did a video, here's a link right here, where I took pictures in a beautiful Christmas setting outdoors and I used nothing but a cell phone as a light source. Another thing is to get some basic photography LED lights that you can get at Best Buy or Amazon or anywhere. This is actually the best thing to get some of these. If you're gonna take pictures on a semi-regular basis, you should have some of these. These are really good. And you have one on each side of you, so you have light coming. This just creates a bigger light source, so this is a good thing to have. Always have these on hand, and this is really good. Another thing that you can use is Christmas lights. You can, these are everywhere at Christmas time. Like a box of these light, string of lights is like five bucks. And they're a nice, great light to use for so many reasons. First of all, it's very Christmassy. So you could have these in the shot or you could actually use these as a light source. What you do is you open the string of lights. You actually use them as a light source. If you string these out over a big distance, you have a large white light source at night when it's dark and it really creates a nice soft light. So you could have this as a soft light source that you shoot through. It'd be like a ring light or something like that. If you're going to use a flash, I suggest not, unless you're shooting, you know, bouncing it off the ceiling, I suggest personally, especially when walking around in public, is to have it disconnected from the camera and to use flash triggers. So that way you can have the, cam the flash separate from the camera. So you have a trigger on the camera and a receiver on the flash. So what you can do, and I did a video about this here, which you can see, where you hand hold the flash off the camera. The more off the camera the, the light is, the more natural the light will look. If it's just right on the camera, it just, you just get the shiny highlights on your face, it doesn't look that great. But if you hold it kind of like up a bit, and then take the picture, it looks a lot better. So. This is a good thing to have if you can get one as a little flash trigger. They're cheap, they're not that much. It tells the camera to flash from a distance. So this is a good way to take better flash pictures. So again, in summary, the best thing to do when taking pictures is to have a large, giant, white light source behind you. The bigger, the better. Picture window, sliding glass doors, or a bunch of lights bouncing off a wall at the people. That's what professionals do. They have something called soft boxes, which are just giant white light sources that they put around them that they shoot next to, which makes the person's face look nice and flattering. You don't want to have harsh lighting. That's basically the basic rule of all photography. So there you go. When you have the family over, 
The first thing to do is to look for a wall of light. And if you can't find one, then look at the person's face. If they have light coming only from one side and there's shadow on the other, that's probably not a good place to take a picture. Tell them to turn, move around, turn this direction and this direction. And when you see no shadows on their face, like one side is not darker than the other, then that's the best place to start. Just walk around in different directions and try to find it to where you don't see a shadow and you see kind of like even light over their face. Even though if you don't know where it's coming from, it's probably a bunch of light bouncing off the walls and ceilings from different areas. Sometimes you just, I do this when I walk around at a shopping mall or at a restaurant with Kara, and I'm just looking at her at all the time. And sometimes I, the lighting is just perfect. I say, stop, hold it. I don't know why the lighting's perfect, but don't move. And then I take a picture. It happens in parking lots. It happens in shopping malls. It happens in restaurants. There's just places in the room where the lighting is just good. So always keep an eye out for nice lighting. That's a photographer's eye. You just spot it and you say, stop. Let me take a picture right here. Always look for nice flat lighting. Like right now, there's no lights on me. The light is just bouncing off from behind the camera from different white walls and things. There's no lighting on me at all. This is just reflected light coming off of ceilings and walls. And it's coming from here and here and there and there and there and a little bit off the floor. So it's kind of, it's not professional lighting, but it's good enough and it's good enough for this video. So that's what I'm trying to tell you is just keep an eye out for that kind of lighting. It's always there in somewhere in every room. There's that magical spot where light just bounces enough from all directions where it's good lighting. Like, okay, here, look. I'm gonna take this camera here and I'm gonna go like now. See, now the lighting isn't that great. I got shadow in my eyes. Like, or, now it's good. Now it's not so good. Now it's not good. You know, so, now it's better. All I did was walk around and notice how the lighting got better or worse. So that's what you should do <clears throat> is always keep an eye out for good lighting. It's, it's there, you just have to find it. Oh, and always remember to white balance. You could have nice flat lighting, but if, the, if the, you don't white balance, you could have orange faces or green faces or blue faces. Get a white piece of paper or look at a person with a white shirt and just focus on that, fill the frame with it, click the white balance so you have nice natural colors on your faces because you don't want to have blue or green faces on your people. Always look for a white surface that's being lit by whatever the lighting is and then white balance. Important, I'm gonna make a video on white balancing but check your camera manual until then. So anyway, I hope that helped and uh, Happy holidays, have fun with your family, quit watching YouTube all the time and enjoy life a little bit. I hope this helped. See you around, bye.